Hi, welcome to another episode of Carrie in the Kitchen. I'm Carrie Oringer. I'm the winemaker for Cornerstone Cellars, and here comes my husband, Jeff. Hello. Hey, Jeff. How you doing? How are you? Mm. Good to see you. I'm good. I don't have a glass of wine yet. Well, yes, you do now. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. We're celebrating a couple of things today. We It's the Labor Day weekend coming yep. up, right? Tomorrow's Friday. Labor Day weekend, and today happens to be International Cabernet Sauvignon Day. Ooh, does anybody that we know make it? A couple of people. <laughs> and there's a couple of people that I know pretty well that actually make it. So there are two wines we're going to taste today. We're going to be tasting the 2018 Oakville Station Cabernet Sauvignon. This is the Cabernet that's in the Wine Club shipment mm. and for this month, for September. And there's a couple of things to know that you can, if you're a Wine Club member, you should go to the website. It's, you have till September 6th. To add more bottles to, to your order if you like and then the week of the 20th we're going to start shipping those wines so those are the two things that wine club uh, our wine club members should know the second wine that we're tasting i'm very excited about it's the 2018 howell mountain cabernet sauvignon and the howell mountain cabernet is really our flagship wine we've been making it since 1991 it's the wine that that we started with uh, when dr dragutsky started the winery 30 years ago it is our 30th anniversary this, this month uh, last month we're celebrating all year though yeah yeah this will be our, our 30th harvest so um speaking of harvest <coughs> we are pretty busy with harvest harvest has started a yeah. week and a half ago a week you and a half in ago. sauvignon block and then mm -hmm. this week pinot noir, pinot noir. Pinot noir. and i pinot got noir. to help sort it that's right and a lot of and we've been out sampling yeah so the inspiration for the for the recipes today came from International Cabernet Sauvignon Day. That's correct. And while we were out vineyard sampling the other day, we stopped at one of our favorite res uh, barbecue restaurants in Sonoma. And what did we have? We had a bunch of stuff. We had all the stuff. <laughs> we had great brisket because they <laughs> have a well-known for the brisket yeah. and you love brisket. I do love brisket. But we had something we hadn't had before, which was smoked short ribs. And we're like, Gosh, that's good. That's a, mm -hmm. And then you said International Cabernet Sauvignon Day, and we both said almost at the same time, nothing goes better with Cabernet than short ribs. So, short ribs. boom, there we are. So, we have uh, smoked pork ribs before, and we've done some other smoking, right? It's still summer, yeah. officially until the 21st. We smoke a lot of pig, much we more do. pig than beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, a little pig snuck in the smoker with this, I think. <laughs> yeah, we right? put a little pork belly in there just for fun. Just for fun. If you're burning wood anyway, why not smoke it You might it as well all? do a couple of things. So I, we're going to prepare this. I say we, I mean you. You're going to talk about how, I want to know a little bit more about them. I don't make them very often. Mm -hmm. So it's not beef, it's, it's not pork, it's beef. There's some preparation that has to happen and then smoking time, so I'm going to let you talk about that. It's a little different than pork ribs, for sure. Actually, a lot different. Yeah. I'm going to show you real quickly um, just how beautiful beef ribs are. Um, and these are not just beef ribs, but these are beef short ribs. They come lower down on the spine right before the plate. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but <laughs> it's the shorter part of the ribs, and they're super beefy. I mean, these are inch and a half tall, and probably five inches long, and they're solid meat. And when you smoke them, they'll recede a little bit. They'll pull back from the bone, so you get this little, well, I'll show it to you later. We have some that are done, but you get this little platter of meat, with, I mean, of bone, with beautiful meat on top of it. So this beautiful hunk of meat that has three or four amazing bites right on top of this gorgeous bone. It's a really beautiful presentation. And a lot of times it's served on polenta, or an, any uh, number of things. And there's nothing wrong with polenta, even though you're not a big fan of polenta. It's a really great dish, and you can serve it with wonderful jus and, and gravies and all sorts of different things and sauces. But you can also just serve it off the smoker. And when we had it off the smoker, we were like, man, the crust, the bark, the bark delicious. The, the, the beef is never more tender. I mean, short ribs, when you cook them, you normally braise them. We and do. Well, we, we do, yeah. Well, we do, but mm -hmm. a lot of times people braise short mm -hmm. ribs and it comes out and it just falls off the bone. Mm -hmm. But we said this smoke just gives a whole new level of complex flavor and it looks beautiful and it comes out just super tender. And we're gonna show you some in a little bit, but this is how you prep them. Different than pork ribs, Beef ribs, you know, with pork ribs, you, you have the bone side and you take the gray skin off the bone side. There's gray skin on this bone side as well, but you don't have to worry about that as much. There's no meat underneath there. There's no meat underneath there. And there's no really meat on, in the pork, but it helps 
with the penetration of the smoke. With this, you're not worried about the penetration of the smoke, but you are worried about getting to the meat and also having it be a, a very delightful eating experience because there's no gray skin on top of the pork ribs, but on the beef ribs there is, and if you don't take off the gray skin, you're gonna to to be fighting through it. So all that beautiful tender meat will have a little bit of a resistance to you. You'll have to cut the gray skin off after it's cooked. And the spice and flavors will be on the gray skin. And that's about what I was about to say, is that, is that it also gives you access to the meat so that the spices will actually go in as well as the smoke penetrating the meat. So you have to remove the gray skin. Now, it's not as easy. Gray skin on a pork is easy. You just pull the edge and you can rip it all off and it's pretty simple. This is a little beefier, if you will, pardon <laughs> the pun but it's a little stronger. You definitely have to trim it off with a knife. And what I've done is I've trimmed off a lot of it, but you take little bits of fat and little bits of gray skin and you just trim it to where you have this little piece of gray skin left and you're done with that. And a sharp knife is helpful. Sharp knife is sharp very knife helpful. Is helpful. And you just basically start to, to pull it up and you go right with the knife and pull it up and then just slice it until you have finished with it. So like now we have- Like a fish. In a, in a way, yes. Um, and this is two beautiful hunks of meat that are now ready for, for a little bit of seasoning. And of course, you've already got your smoker started, so it's warming up. It should be up to temperature before you even start rubbing the meat. Which is at the temperature. And the temperature is 225 degrees. You can do 250, you can even do 275. Some people even do 300. It just uh, adds to a, a shorter smoke time. But I like a longer smoke time and I even like to roast it a little bit more. There's a lot of different ways of doing short ribs, especially on the smoker. And I like it about 225 and I did mine for about four hours. But I'll talk to you about that later when I get to the finished product. Now I'm going to show you how to prep it. So you've got your smoker going around 225 and all you do is, is and a lot of recipes call for just salt and pepper and some garlic powder. I like to add a little bit to that because I, I like to have a lot of flavor in my, in my rubs. So I added some chili powder from New Mexico. I added some smoked paprika. Um, I added some mushroom powder and a couple of other small things, um, some cumin. And what I did was I just mixed it all together in this with the salt and the pepper and it's all ready to go. You can actually salt and pepper your, your meat separately as well. Just you want to have a good amount of salt on there and then you can just pepper it up a little bit. And there is some salt and pepper in my, my rub mix, but it doesn't hurt to put a little bit more on. And then you just basically put a nice layer of sprinkling of rub on these guys. And the reason they call it rub mm -hmm. is you don't want to rub it in, you want to pat it in. By rubbing it in, the granules, especially the salt and the pepper, will cut and serrate the meat and, and it's, it's misnomered that it's a rub, it's really a pat. It's, really it's a, pat. a gentle massage, it's a massage powder. And then you wanna make sure you get all four sides. So you turn it over and you do the back because you wanna have some, a little bit of flavor on the back where the bones are. But wait, wait do you see this when it comes out? It's just such a beautiful piece of meat. And then you do it on the sides. You can't really get this part wrong. You know, I, we could put a recipe up for this, like how much of each spice, but it's really to, I hate when that's a recipe says to taste, right. but really you can put whatever you want together in this rub. We happen to love garlic. Tons of garlic goes in there, Yeah. you know, and uh, I wanted to make a point about that when you said the New Mexican Don't chilies, the ends. do the ends, yeah. the Mexican chilies, mm -hmm. not spicy, no. just flavorful. Well, you can get them spicy. You, you don't do the chamayo, but you do the, the green the hatch. The green hatch. That's what I've been using yeah. because... My wife has a very sensitive palate. I'm very sensitive. Mm -hmm. I don't like real spicy. No. But we have lots of friends who and do. No, so. but real spicy also can really detract, even though it's, it can be nice as long as you don't use it in excess, but it can detract from the overall flavor of the dish. So you've got to be careful with the spice. But now you've got this rubbed all the way around. And again, rubbed padded. is not the right word. you got that Massaged padded. into your meat. So now that you've rubbed your meat, you're in good shape and you're probably happy. So you now have this completely prepped your smoker is at 225 mm -hmm. you have to feed it if depending on the smoker you're using but you're gonna have to feed it every 45 minutes to an hour keep it up at 225 because i like a nice even smoke and an even temperature on my smoker 
and just uh, be prepared to be around every 45 minutes to an hour. Toss a little wood on the fire and then keep it going. That's a good reason to like drink beer on a Saturday afternoon. Absolutely, or drink wine. You can have Cabernet with it. You can do it. wine too. Yeah. Yep. But you know, you're spending how many hours is this going to be on the smoker? Hours and hours. So this is the thing. There's a lot of different opinions on here. Some people say three hours tops because you know you've absorbed a lot of smoke. Some people say no, it's got to be six to eight hours. Some people say nine or ten. That's a lot of smoke. If you're going to smoke your ribs for a long period of time. You want to get them up to, this is where you need an instant read thermometer. Make sure you have a meat thermometer by your smoker. And you want to get this up to about 200 to 205 degrees. At 205 to 210, the collagen and the connective tissue all melt and basically dissolve. And so after they've rendered, you have a really beautiful, soft, fallen off the bone piece of meat. But what you, if you don't have it, it's fully cooked at about 170, 175. And after about four hours, I hit about 175, 180. And I just take it off the thing because that has enough smoke on it. I don't want to over smoke my meat. And I've done that before. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. I love smoke, but it just becomes too much. It starts to dry out a little bit sometimes. And it's also just an overpowering flavor. It takes so, over the flavor of the meat. Yes, exactly. So what I like to do is what I do with my pork ribs, which is get three or four hours of smoke on there. With pork ribs, three hours is usually enough. With the dense beef ribs, four hours seems to be right. And then I'm just gonna set this aside because I'm gonna show you the finished product. So once they come off the smoker. What I do is I have a pan, a cookie sheet or something, but I do a double layer of this pink butcher paper. Now you can use aluminum foil, but aluminum foil doesn't breathe. And if you want to use aluminum foil, it's totally fine. Yes, just, we have. Just, yes, we used to all the time. And the aluminum foil is going to steam your meat, so you're going to get a, a much quicker cook in the oven, or if you put it back on your grill. But if, if the grill has, I mean, if your smoker has pretty much stopped uh, after four hours, I quit adding wood after about three and a half hours, I'm going to let it cool down and let it gently uh, relax and, and be done with it. So I use the oven. But you can, if you just want to keep feeding wood, you can smoke it for six hours. But once you get to four hours or so, you put it in the pink butcher paper. And once you put it in there, what I like to do is I add a little bit of bacon fat. Because bacon fat never hurt a thing. <laughs> and then it gives you a little bit of added richness. And then I put in some red wine. In this, in this case, I used the Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon. Because it's International Cabernet Day. Exactly. And I use Cornerstone Cabernet in here. I mean, you only put in about two ounces, maybe three at the most, but mostly two ounces of, of, uh, of, of, of basically wine right on top of your, your ribs. You wrap them up, you get them nice and sealed, and I put them in an oven, again, at 225. And that way I know I don't have to keep worrying about the wood and the fire and the different temperatures. You have a nice steady temperature. And then I leave it in there for about two hours. Then I take my thermometer because I've checked it already after the smoker and I'm up to about 170, 175, 180. And after a couple of hours in a 225 oven, I hit 205. And then I know that the collagen has rendered and I've got a beautiful, soft, tender piece of meat. So let me show you how these come out. You come out, you have a little log, this bone acts almost like a tray, and you have this hunk of meat. And on either side, you've got a nice little, it's almost like finger food. You've got two little finger holes, but they're gonna be hot coming out of the oven, so you really can't do this. I've already let these cool. Mm -hmm. But then, after you take them out of the oven, you wanna set them aside, and you wanna let them rest at room temperature for at least 30 minutes. That's very important. Then everything comes back up to speed and you have these beautiful things. Now, if you have a bed of polenta, you can do that if you want, but we tend not to use polenta because she's not but a big fan of it. Rice. But you can put vegetables under it, you can put rice under it, you can do anything mm -hmm. you like. I'm going to put this just on a plate because that's that really is actually all we need. The, that is actually the way I like it. And there we have it, and we're going to put it so in front of the winemaker. This, this started out the same size as those. Yeah. They were all off the same, okay. Absolutely, and your, your meat recedes a good inch, inch and a half on either side. So you have about two to two and a half, maybe three inches of bone sticking out now, and you have big hunk of meat st uh, standing up, and it's really, really lovely. Yes. 
I'm going to put this on a piece okay. of plate, and I'm going to get rid of this. Okay. Excuse me just a moment. So, because it's International Cabernet Sauvignon Day, and because it's Wine Club Shipment Month, we are tasting two wines from Cornerstone Cellars. One is the Cabernet Sauvignon I make from Oakville Station in Oakville, and it's a great vineyard. It's owned by the University of California at Davis. They farm it for us. Um, they farm it specifically for us, our blocks. We also get Merlot from that vineyard, and we also get Cabernet Franc. And in this 2018 vintage that's going to be coming out in the Wine Club shipment this month, it has 6% Merlot from Oakville Station and 6% Cab Franc from Oakville Station. So this is the first wine that I thought would pair really well. Wow. Um, yeah, with the beef short ribs. Then the second wine that we're going to pair is the 2018 Howell Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon. And again, I mentioned earlier, we've been making this since 1991, so 30 year anniversary, making the Howell Mountain wine. And I was up there a couple of days ago and the fruit is really ripe. They're above the fog line up mm. there at about 2,000 feet. And it's been getting way more sunshine than on the valley floor because we've been fogged in most mornings, mm -hmm. right? So it's getting a little bit more sunshine and we might actually be bringing in the Howell Mountain before some of the valley fruit. Yeah, a lot of people think of that mountain fruit as being mm -hmm. cooler and, and later in the season, yep. but in certain areas, if you get above the, mm -hmm. the fog line, your mountain fruit actually can ripen faster. And it is coming, it's real, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful year. Uh, the drought has had an effect on the vineyards, um, not in a bad way necessarily. We're getting uh, smaller berries, more concentrated condensed berries, so the juice to skin ratio is going to be uh, work a little more in our favor. Mountain um, fruit with more shallow soils generally has smaller, smaller berries. Smaller berries, yeah. and even smaller now because of the drought yeah. and the work they're doing. So um, this is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, Howell Mountain. Yum. Yeah. There's, there's probably nothing that I would suggest that would go with Howell Mountain better than short ribs, but mm -hmm. there's also nothing I would recommend for short ribs more than Howell Mountain. Howell Mountain. I'll tell you, I just want to show you before and after real quickly. Big hunk of red meat, totally uncooked, on the bone, bone, less meat because it retracts, but you still have these beautiful, dark, heavily crusted, barked pieces of absolute delicious and i want to make a note because when you first started smoking for me mm -hmm. i was worried about how dark it was and i thought you burnt it <laughs> and it's not burnt and it's just the bark that's coming from the smoke that's correct so it's it's uh i was i was a little relieved after the first couple of bites and, and i've lightened it recently because i changed my smoking regimen yeah so i used to smoke with a cooler fire even though the temperature in the oven said it was 225, I was using a dome thermometer, and when I got to surface thermometers, you learn these things. It took me 10 oh, years to figure it all out, but uh, the surface thermometers, when they read 225, your dome thermometer is reading 325, 350, but with a hotter fire and a hotter smoke, you're not getting as much creosote. So you really, with smoke, you're not looking for that really puffy gray smoke coming out of your smoker. You're looking for almost a wispy vapor. And you hardly see any smoke at all if you have it at the right temperature. So you're not getting as much blackened creosote. I used to really creosote my ribs and they weren't as good as they are now. Mm -hmm. Now they're more mahogany colored, but these have turned this nice, beautiful dark brown. All right. Let's taste. We've talked enough. I actually do want to taste. Oh, nice and tender. Oh yeah. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So what oh, I wow. what I recommend too, yeah, too. what I recommend for me I like to give it a little swirl. Haven't tasted the wine yet. Give that a little taste. Just another excuse to have some more wine. So 2018 mm. Oakville Station Cabernet Sauvignon. It's like got six percent Merlot in it and six percent Cap Franc in it as well. All from the same vineyard. So a little bit more complex. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. I not only smell my wines, but I smell my foods as well. Well, and I've this been, you know, I've been smelling this now for yeah, hours. Hours. Mm. 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 So tender. So tell me again, how many hours on the smoker? For me, it's four hours on the smoker, two hours in the oven. Mm -hmm. wow. All of it, two twenty-five. You can do six hours in the smoker, but after four hours, you have to wrap it up usually or else you'll start drying out your meat or over smoking it which some people don't think mm. is possible and that's fine if you just like you know like supercharged super smoked meat no problem more power to you i like it a little bit more subtle boy that's good now try that with the oakville station cab i'm going to yeah 
I just cut another bite because I really want some more. Mmm. <laughs> you know, we could just pick these up and eat them like ribs, but it seems so uncivilized. Yeah, and they go, they, they go, you go through it too quickly. Mm -hmm. Man, that is a good rib. I hate to pack, I pat myself on the back, but that I is good. Okay, so. Now, we, you know, we hadn't made these before. No, this is the first time. Not until yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, we tasted them last week and went, we got to try this. So I'm pretty happy that I was mm -hmm. able to do this. I read a lot about it, but it's nice that we got it in one take. Well, and Rob at the barbecue place was pretty generous with the information mm -hmm. and how he, how you know, his cooking times and how long he smokes. Which it barbecue helps. place was it? Well, it was Koshan Volant mm -hmm. in Sonoma. And I hate to tell too many people because the next time we go, it'll be too busy. But what I love, here's what I love what he said. When we came in, it was a little later in the afternoon. We'd been in the vineyards all day. I said, oh, Rob, do you still have brisket? He goes, I always have brisket. It's what we do. It's what we're known for. And I'm like, I love this place. Brisket is our thing. And it's, uh, brisket is our thing. And it is. Mm -hmm. They make great brisket. Mm -hmm. But only on weekends, they make smoked short ribs. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure we go there on weekends again. But... We also decided to make them ourselves because yep. we have a smoker. So, have you tried it with, with the Oakville Station Cabernet Sauvignon? Of course I did. All right. Have you tried it then with the Howell Mountain Cabernet? Just about to. Okay. Oh. I just like keeping to eat it mm -hmm. because it's very, very tender, very moist, mm -hmm. and amazingly flavorful. I like the rub, but, you know, I would because I made it. You made it. And I really like the smoke. It's not overly smoky. And you can see the smoke ring, mm -hmm. the real red ring on the inside, mm -hmm. and it's not blackened like it used to be when I was creosoting the hell out of my meat, and now it's kind of mahogany on the side. It's really lovely. Mm. That is nice. I like that with the Howl Mountain, too. Mm -mm -mm. You know, the Howl Mountain in 2018, it's um, going to release in this month, um, no, October. The Howl Mountain releases in October, um, so yeah, we're getting good. a chance to kind of do a pre-taste on it. And mm. it's just a baby, you know, it's mountain fruit. It can certainly go wow. years and years and years and years, but it'll be ready once we release it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about Even that. Even though that's a young mountain Cabernet, mm -hmm. that rib totally tames that wine. I mean, the tannins don't show up. It's, they're, they're lush, they're delicious. Juicy. Oh man, that's, that's a juicy meat with a really big juicy mm. wine. That's not overly tannic to begin with, but the tannins are tamed by the amount of flavor in that piece of meat. I'm so happy that it's International Cabernet Sauvignon Day. What there. a way to celebrate. And we got to taste two of them with we really did. good meat. We, we like did. that. The uh, couple other things just before we sign off and eat the rest of these ribs because they're delicious. Um, along with in the Wine Club shipment, along with the 2018 Oakville Station Cabernet, we also have the 2019 Farina Vineyard Sauvignon Blanc. So those are the two wines uh -huh. are in the Wine Club shipment. So again, September 6th, you have till then to add additional bottles on, of course, at your member discount. And then the, uh, the week of the 20th, we'll start shipping, or you can pick up in the tasting room. And speaking of tasting rooms, we are looking at getting the Yountville tasting room open towards the end of September. So we should be able to start hosting guests in Yountville. We're do going through construction. Keep your fingers crossed, Keep but we're weeks mm -hmm. away. We are. We are. And we're very excited to be hosting people up there again. Um, we loved our time um, up in Yountville. Um, we've had a great time in Napa as well, but we'll, we will be moving to Yountville in September mm -hmm. and hosting people. And what's great is we have um, space out on the patio as well. So we'll be hosting indoors and outdoors. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Both ways. Yep. And then the October release of the Howl Mountain, mm -hmm. that won't be in a shipment or will it be in a shipment? No, it doesn't come in a shipment. It, you have to order it You separately. have to order it separately. Boy, that's worth ordering though. That's yeah. really yeah. good. I really like the Oakville Station, but the richness of that meat, Thick. it goes even better with the, with the Howl Mountain. Howl Mountain. Wow. Yep. I mean, they're both good. Yep. Mm. So we, I'm not sure where we'll be next week on Thursday with har Harvest in Full Swing. We, we're headed to Santa Barbara tomorrow morning early. We're going to check on the fruit down there. That may be coming in. The Pinot Noir from Santa Barbara might be coming in um, next week. Oh, the well. romance of the wine business. You get to get up at 5 in the morning and, and leave at 6 right. for Santa Barbara that's so right. you can count bricks that's right we can so we're gonna do that and then pop right back that's right so we'll Coming do that and then sunday we're back in the vineyards again we also have the merlot out in the oakville station that's very close we may be bringing that in next week so yeah. we've had perfect weather here 
Um, it's been sunny and not too hot. We sampled it's be hot. four or five venues a couple days mm -hmm. ago. Yeah, and everything and everything's great. And like it's a really it's amazing coming along. So yeah. I'm super excited about that. So that is that's we don't know where we'll be to next week. Not yet. We, we actually might be out on Instagram. We'll be somewhere, and we'll, we'll find. We'll be somewhere you. at this time at six o'clock Pacific, either Facebook or, or Instagram. Either way. Well, I'm going to toast with the Howell Mountain. And I've got the Oakville Station. And cheers. Thanks for joining cheers. us today. I hope you smoke some short ribs yourself someday. But, man, it's certainly worth the trouble. Well, it's Memorial, uh, Memorial Labor Day weekend. That's right. Why don't we turn the smoker on? Yeah, that's a good Ooh. idea. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Love you, honey. I'm going to turn this off. All right. I'm just going to stand here and drink like I have no tomorrow. <laughs>